Tonight on Free King TV, Central Square is at the center of two stories, and we interview Kevin Innes in studio. Kevin, your anchor. Hurricane Irene gave quite a square scare, or at least that's what the weathercasters have been shouting about for the past week. Yet New Hampshire weathered the storm reasonably well. Nature had more in store for Keene this past week with a slight tremor felt from an earthquake. Geologists placed the epicenter 40 miles northwest of Richmond, Virginia and measured 5.8 magnitude. For many individuals, this week marked the first earthquake and hurricane experience in their lives. I've had several. Keene Central Square is the location for two stories tonight. The first involves the first involves a, a bit of a cleanup and re, uh, with the residents. Please take a look. Hey man, what are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, cleaning up uh, the commons here. Hi, I'm Daisy. We're at the, the common, the Keen, the, in the gazebo. Um, we've taken it upon ourselves this morning, since this morning, to clean the gazebo and the surrounding area. It appears that uh, some public officials didn't like uh, a certain presence of people here. And it all started, I guess, yesterday. There were three cops here. They've been standing here for like the last three days. They'll come down, they'll cross their arms, and they just watch. The cop was on here for three days. Did he clean up anything? No. Uh, no. But he was no. being paid. They took, they took somebody's bike and someone else's bike lock because they were left unattended. But no, not one piece of trash was picked up. I took it upon myself yesterday to to ask one of them why they were here. And they simply stated that because we were trashing the place, it was deterring families with children to come here, which is the whole reason the gazebo was built. It wasn't just us, and we know that, but we are willing to accept the responsibility of, of picking it up. Right, but it's not the, all the quote-unquote juggalos. No, no, I'm not a juggalo. I've right. never been a juggalo in my life. I didn't That's awesome. So this is all cigarette butts that we found on the premises today. So we're gonna, some people are gonna take this down to City Hall. Yeah, see if I can get an ashtray down in the common. Uh, I think more people would be more obliged to use an ashtray if there was one provided. Maybe somebody, a business in Keene can donate one. Maybe, Without yeah. using tax dollars. <laughs> Maybe. I was gonna try to get the trash cans emptied more frequently. All right. People would start using them if they weren't full. Oh, the mayor drove by and was like giving us a thumbs up. He's like, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. I'll be by later to talk to you. We've got teenagers down here who hang out every day on their summer vacation because it's out of the weather. It's shade. There's hardly any shade in Keene. This place is shaded. And come on, the cops can't tell us that this place was built for people to come with their families and we are a family. As you can see, I mean, this is a crowd that normally gathers and we're fine. There's no fights. There's no gang related issues. Just, just community. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very very much and we appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. On tonight's panel, we are joined by Heike Corser and special guest Ademo Freeman. Ademo, you shot the video for this package. What are your thoughts on the cleanup? Hey, thanks. Uh, the cleanup I thought was great. I just went down to the common to, uh, it was the year anniversary since uh, Craig, Ma or, uh, I forget his last name, I apologize. Yes, yeah, a month since the uh, death recently in Keene. So we went down there to cover that and then it turned out to be a cleanup event so I thought it was really good that the f folks there recognized the issue you know the cop had been standing out on the common for the last couple days prior to that and finally someone up and asked him why are you here and he said the place is a mess and you know like Daisy said in the video that it wasn't just those who hang out down there I mean there was a lot of cigarette butts at the entrance ways and other things but it's a responsibility I to organize the cleanup. I thought they did a very great job I was down there I think the evening after they cleaned up and it just looked spectacular. Um, and I think that people should take the initiative to do that more often. I, from what I understand, I believe there is a volunteer group that goes down to plant flowers and, and keep it up. But I think that's the case in the Schwelet Park. I'm not sure if that's the same in the square. I have seen a city... I think it's part of it. There's a city manager guy or a city employee that does work there, and he does a lot with the fountains and stuff, but there's been complaints even from other folks about the garbage is not being emptied there. Uh, well often they, enough. Well, they do music, or they did throughout the summer every Wednesday, and then they didn't take out the trash after that. And people, you know, when people gather there, there's going to be extra trash. And in the summertime, people gather there right. more often than other seasons. So they should be taking out the trash more than once a week, or if they feel that there's an event going on or whatnot. Sure, but I mean, here's the issue yeah. with public property tragedy to the commons. You know, a uh, group of people known as the city of Keene own this property, 
And sure, there's a guy that's down there in the park to clean up and take care of the water fountain and the bubbler and the gazebo, but he didn't have an ash. The city didn't provide an ashtray down there. If the if I own the property, if you own the property, I'm sure we would have had an ashtray down there a while ago. Absolutely. You know. I mean, I always you know put out my cigarette butt and throw it away in the trash, but not everyone will do that. Oh yes, of course. But if there's a cigarette container, then people will do right. that. First and foremost, it's personal responsibility. Right. Folks really need to go and uh, you know if they like the park and they you know respect it, clean up, keep it cleaner than you left it. That's yeah. always rule number one. I'm saying with the tragedy of the commons, though, is that they own this. Everyone thinks this is provided for. That you know, someone else is going to clean this up because we pay taxes and da 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 da. And the that's the not always the here. case. And that's not always the case. And here's what you've seen. So this is my point: is that look at the city's solutions. They have a person who is probably fed up with not having ashtrays and doing all this knick knack clean work, or has a lot of other tasks. Well, He's too busy. Well, the city's solution is to park a police officer there to intimidate them. Right. To I not hang out that. there so they don't make a mess. Right. Is that so? The I'm. I'm thoroughly impressed with this group of young adults, teenagers, and uh, well, I did see people of all ages on that video right. just taking the initiative to clean up. Exactly. The I community know. came forward. I mean, even though this place is supposed to be managed, there's probably a Parks and Recreations Council. They know there's people that yeah. go after the, or that are supposed to take care of these things. They're failing to do so. They're failing to do so when they're being paid to do so via taxation. And the community who recognized the problem and said, hey, this officer's mm -hmm. here because they're making a mess. The solution isn't to intimidate us to leave so that there is no mess. The solution was to get some buckets, mops, and clean it up. Which is perfect. Right. So, so what do you think the city council could do now to like think about some of these issues? They can really push for volunteers and advertise that, hey, let's get some volunteers down here. I don't think they need to designate any more money towards the park or anything. I just think that they can, you know, we have neighborhood groups in Keene, they can reach out to them and say, hey, would you be willing to help volunteer to keep this place clean? Right. Or, or maybe write a letter of recognition or thank you to the people that actually did clean it up because, I'm sorry, but I like to be recognized, you know, right. some recognition when I do a good job. So maybe that would be a, an incentive for them to continue to do it. Right. Well, and the mayor did say he was going to stop by, but uh, they checking in a day later they said they hadn't the mayor hadn't stopped by but he did go by and tell them that they were doing yeah. a good job so that, cool. that was nice of him but my point is is that so the city is clearly you know there a problem was created due to it being public property you know the, the solution wasn't solved by the, the government the city it was, right. involvement it was solved by the community so maybe the city can take this as a sign put the central square park up for sale let somebody buy it who will be, have every incentive to make uh, maintain it, take care of it, make it look pretty, keep it clean. Whether that's hiring somebody or volunteers, I think it's a pretty good message that was sent by the community saying, hey, we don't need you and you know, you guys can back off. What do you think of that? You know how I think about that. Well, <laughs> I think it'd be good. I, mean, the I, suggestions I think, you gave I think were if we well. continue to um, really recognize volunteers and, and their good efforts, then I, I think that would be good for the park. All right, and with that, I think we're gonna go back to Michelle Seven. <laughs> Well, thank you both. The next video was shot on Friday at the first of what is said to be a new weekly event, Free Speech Friday. Welcome to uh, Free Speech Friday. This event here today, Free Speech Friday, is just to get uh, the community to gather together. Basically what we wanted to do is try and get as many people out here to uh, celebrate the ideas of uh, our most powerful tool um, in, in a free society, which is, is free speech, free expression. And uh, all comments are welcome. We just ask that uh, everybody uh, keeps it, uh, just be kind to one another. This is from uh, Derek J. Freeman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Everyone shut up! Isn't it wonderful to live in a free country? I am thrilled that you're here today because it means that the first ever Free Speech Friday is commencing. All I like to say is, if you have weed, smoke it, and smoke it to the day you die, seriously. Some of the things I'd like to see with the Free Speech Friday would be if anybody has any, uh, uh, if they can identify a problem in the community, maybe we can come together and solve it. If anybody has any grievances that they'd like to redress. I've seen many things in my life. I want to tell you about uh, about heroes. Harry, Jeff was the name his parents gave him, his loving parents. But you might know him as the dude. If we have any uh, musicians, this is a great place to uh, ex um, express your free speech. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Maddox. Uh, I moved here originally in 2009 uh, for the Free State Project. I 
came here because I believe freedom is the best way to live, and I don't think that the government forcing people to live the way they think they should live is a good thing at all. Heike, what do you think of the idea of having a free, free speech event at Central Square? Thank you, Michelle. Um, I really like the idea. I mean, that's my constitutional right to say whatever's on my mind, and I really like that idea, especially with the bullhorn, because I last summer was arrested for using a bullhorn on public property. But what if you infringe on someone's but right to peace and quiet? Well, they can. You and that person can talk about that and make some sort of compromise. I don't think <laughs> I an arrest a needs to be made. <laughs> but uh, so, free speech Friday. What's what goes on? Did you go down to this one? Were you there? I was there briefly. I actually forgot about it. Oh. I've been very booked lately. So, what did you think of the turnout, or what you see, and how was it going? Um, for the first free speech Friday, I thought it was a pretty good turnout. Um, from by the time I got down there, there was about twenty people down there. Did you have um, time to speak? I did not speak. You did not? No, I didn't have anything prepared. If you had the chance, prepared. what would you say? I think next Friday I'll have something prepared. Um, yeah. I'm not certain yet. No I topic have to give or anything? Thought. Not yet. I know, I'd hate to be put on the spot. I, I may actually talk about free speech. Right. Yeah, it is important. I think this is a great thing that some of the folks you yeah. know, around here have gotten to. And uh, get, having, you know, being able to vent and you know, let other people know, you know publicly how, right. how you feel in state is, is a good thing. It's a good way to start conversations, open it up. And I talk to so together. many people that say, okay, you know, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. But there's never a time or a place. Or, you know, um, so it never really comes up. Or I don't know. I just think that. Well, it can also bring down, the, uh, sometimes when folks are engaging in conversations like even free speech, you know, some people are like, well, you can't say whatever you want when you want. My, you know, like I was giving you a hard time yeah, about saying. Yeah, thanks for heckling me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but, you know, your right to peace and quiet. But right. this will bring it down to a different setting, you know. So mm -hmm. instead of shouting, you know, you go up and say your thing and the other persons can come up and say their thing and, you know, let the conversation begin. Um, after that, and so I think it will be a real civil way and to bring. I personally love the bullhorn, but I, you don't always have to use a bullhorn to no. exercise free speech. And I think what free, the Free Speech Friday will do is get the community to actually start talking about what's on their mind and whatnot, and then realize, hey, it, it's okay to do this, and then they can do it elsewhere or wherever. Right, and who knows? Maybe this can spawn something greater, or get, inspire people mm -hmm. to get more active and involved. Absolutely. In, you know, community, whatever events that they feel are close mm -hmm. to them. You know, we also seen some folks in the video selling food. You know, what do you think about folks selling food in the park? I love it because yeah. I'm always hungry when I'm down at the park for some reason. It's just, it's a park, and I want, I want ice cream or cookies or. But something, are you worried something. that the food is going to be unsafe, or like it wasn't regulated by the FDA? If I really felt that the food might be unsafe, I would probably not buy it. Right, or if you got sick from it once or something. Right, then I would let everyone know that, hey, don't don't buy that. It's, that Plus, made I'd sick. much rather see people trying to sell a good or service than, you know, living mm -hmm. off of the, the man or welfare Absolutely. or something. Absolutely. At least see the guys out there trying to make a couple bucks. So yeah. that's cool. But some folks might think you need a permit. You know, we had we had a discussion I, a couple weeks ago about In this day permits. and age, I'm A-OK -okay with however you want to try to make money, you, you do it. Just right? stop living off the state. Even if that's illegal? like pot selling or selling drugs right. you know my stance on this we talked about that last week i don't mind people selling drugs but i what don't if it's just but cookies i think that guy was just selling but cookies. cookies lemonade yeah. i mean whatever i mean if, if you want to sell jewelry or anything down wherever you want so maybe this is something else we, we can put on the to. city council's agenda to sh you know they can sell the park first then that person can decide i highly doubt we can take a look at some permits why not i just don't think they'll do it I mean, I don't, I don't even, well, I guess that's a conversation for another time. I mean, you, you could always ask them. You, you could write them a letter. Well, I don't want to ask them anything. I just hope they would do it I themselves. have a feeling it would be put as informational and just filed away. Filed away? Well, why is that? Why wouldn't they address the question? No, they'd address it, but they'd but, I mean, call the meeting informational. They would say they'd file, you said they'd file it away, but no, that's not really addressing they're it. Not, well, they're not going to put it up for sale. Okay. But why? I don't know. I just don't You have think no they would. guess why they wouldn't put it up for sale? Is there a reason for the city of Keene to own a park? I don't see the reason of the city of Keene to own too much. Right. I mean, they didn't clean it up. They didn't organize an event for it. You know, efficiently. they let people use it already. So it was, I don't think much would possible. change other than. But those sprinklers could go uh, off. <laughs> well, I'm sure the sprinklers will still go off every day. Uh, if no, I don't want it. them to go off every day. I want them turned off. Oh, you don't so like they, the sprinklers? They, they don't need to be on it every day. 
I mean, even when it's raining, they go off. Oh. That's such a waste. Well, see, maybe if the city of Keene didn't own it, but an actual person. <laughs> All right, we won't get started on this. I, I have a list of things with that part. Oh, did you get? Did you run into the sprinklers one night or something? You have <laughs> Several a nights. It <laughs> sounds intentional, but. No, but um, I go to work very early in the morning, oftentimes, and I get sprayed on my motorcycle driving by. Oh, that sounds that's, a little reckless. That's not okay with me. Speaking of reckless, <laughs> let's take it back to Michelle Seven. <laughs> Kevin Innes sold precious metals in Asheville, North Carolina, exchanging copper, silver, and gold. If the U.S. Constitution says only gold and silver should be legal tender, then why did he get arrested? I found out more about it from Liberty Dollars publications and online sources, including statements from the Federal Reserve saying, well, they may not they may choose to use this currency in their own community, but it won't be accepted at our, at our banks. Well, I wasn't intending on giving it away to banks anyways. I want to use it in my community in this form that would help keep circulating amongst us and has some real value in it. As prices go up, it goes up too. That makes sense to me. In June of 2009, Kevin Innes of Asheville, North Carolina, was arrested on federal fraud charges, facing up to 45 years in prison. For what you ask? Being a representative and salesperson of what seems to be an illegal substance, silver. I wanted to make sure that my local community officials knew what my intentions were. So I went to the police, told them what I was doing, not only the city police, but also the county police. And they said, well, you're not breaking any law. We already checked with the Secret Service, and uh, we can't endorse what you're doing, but um, you're, you're, you're doing okay. It's, it's barter, right? He said, yes, it's a form of exchange between us. So great. Uh, and every cop that I saw after that, county or city, a civil action started against the U.S. Mint and the Justice Department for slander and libel. It was... Um, they decided to arrest me on charges of counterfeiting and uttering, proclaiming this as a false instrument of exchange. False being that, claiming that I said that it was liber uh, uh, legal tender current money or coin. That was their claim. Well, then after 23 months of sitting in jail waiting for the trial, they said, well, actually, uh, you know, we're not going to charge you with 45 years. We're going to give you a $300 fine and let you go. Kevin as well. Kevin? Hi, Kevin. Hi. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you for being on the show. Uh, tell us where it stands now. What have you been up to in these you know, last couple of months, and where does your case stand currently? Well, uh, it was May 6th that I was released, finally, after 23 months. I really was hoping to go to trial, actually, and have my day in court. Right. But they kind of thwarted that through uh, some procedure where... I thought, mm, they're not very good losers. So I thought, maybe there's something I can stand with integrity, my actions, and gives them uh, an out. And okay. that was a $300 fine. So essentially, they gave you a slap on the wrist, but a bunch of time of your life taken from you that you can't get back. Right, yeah. So uh, a, a uh, good country is like a good man, and uh, he will ex uh, acknowledge his mistakes and make amends. That's called restitution. Right. But maybe I'll have to ask them nicely. Now, did you feel that you made a mistake in no. partaking in this? Not at all. Okay. I wanted to stand up for what I believe in and what I... So you think all they made a mistake? They made a mistake and they okay. knew it was going to be a mistake from the get-go because the FBI allegedly can do very good investigations. And so after a two-year investigation, why did they claim something that eventually... They claimed I would have to have 45 years on counterfeiting charge, and yet what it ended up being was a petty offense of, they said it looked too much like regular money. So it and, wasn't counterfeiting. Uh, no, I was not, I was in possession of counterfeit materials. Com mm -hmm. com counterfeit items was what it, which is a petty offense. As if, if you went to a store and you uh, gave them a 20 and got 10 back and change, and you used it at another, another store, that 10, and they said, oh, this is counterfeit. That is a, could be a petty offense, mm -hmm. wow. and that's what all this was, was possession of something they consider to be counterfeit. 
So why did you decide to start exchanging money is cause, or currencies? Because that's what you were doing. You were exchanging. Uh, what, why did, was that a business decision? That's what you started to do? Or what was the initial choice that you got in this? Was it hobby? Why did you start doing that? I didn't know that alternative currencies were possible. I thought, this is a great idea. Am I, is there, what are the laws involved with this? And I researched that. And it seemed as though there was lots of uh, approval from the Constitution that silver and gold should be um, useful and, and usable. Right. And it didn't look like regular money to me. I mean, I've never ex had a, a storekeeper drop a one ounce piece of silver in my hand or, right. or gold for that matter. And so uh, I didn't think it was counterfeit, and nor did the police that I went to talk to. They didn't think it was uh, um, counterfeit either. Right, because prior to you, you went to the local police and sheriff's department? Yes, before, uh, just as it was getting going, and, and talked to them, and they said, uh, well, we can't endorse this, but uh, you're not breaking any law. And in fact, I checked with the Secret Service, said the person from the Asheville Police Department, and uh, you're not breaking any law, but of course we can't help you out in any way. No problem. I just want to make it so that you're not caught flat-footed. So Sorry you did your for the research pun. and yet you were still jailed for 23 months for exchanging currencies. For cor exchanging a currency that the government, that, that, that the Constitution says we're supposed to do. Because uh, strictly speaking, the government does not use coins. Because a coin is has three criteria. It is made of silver and gold, it's stamped with approved devices by the government, and it's put into circulation as money. So the U.S. Treasury puts out one ounce silver pieces, but it's not in circulation as currency. The U.S. Mint also makes nickels and other things of base metals, but they're not made of silver and gold. Mm -hmm. So will the true coin please stand up? <laughs> uh, US, uh, I mean, Liberty dollars are not coins because they are not issued by the U.S. government. Nor, in my estimation still, do they look anything like regular currency that the U.S. Mint puts out. So. So why would someone give you something for this? Did they trust your, yourselves in the business? Did they trust as the far value? as getting getting started? Exchange, yeah. Why would you get? Why would I give you anything for a Liberty dollar? Well, uh, one of the reasons was that they acknowledged it as being valuable, something right in your hand, and a lot of people appreciate shiny object, objects, and there's nothing sh shinier than silver. Mm -hmm. It's used in mirrors and things. Right. And uh, I was also <laughs> supporting local community. By having a currency that continues to be changed, exchanged between us, like I spend it at your store, you give it to Ike as change, mm -hmm. she goes and spends it at my store, and it come, keeps circulating right. around. If corporations and, and government choose not to accept it for their various reasons, then, gee, I guess we'll just have to s support small well, businesses. Well, to actually survive on this, it would take more than just the three of us doing it. How, how big was your um, operation again? How do you start a fire? You start it with a few items and enough heat to get it ignited and then it becomes contagious Correct. right yes it so only takes a small a group uh, with a few businesses that said this is a great idea uh well, i think it's so good so i'm going to give it up before it was shut down well there was probably about uh 30 20 to 30 million pieces out in circulation or 20 to 30 million dollars uh in circulation which wow. compared to the u.s mint uh is or nothing the, they put out nine million ounces per year. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's incredible. I mean, it's far and away. So this is less less than the proverbial drop in the but bucket. Still, that's that's talking quite a value. I mean, now the issue though was that very little of it was being used as actual currency. Most people would get it, and I like that. They put it in their own pocket, and you never see it yep. again. So there was a few businesses who would who would give it out to somebody else. But then they thought it was nice and keep, kept it for themselves. So as far as circulation on a regular basis, there's probably maybe a few thousand dollars. I mean, it wasn't much. Mm -hmm. The Liberty Dollar was not doing that well. Why did they jump on top of it so much? Do they know something we don't know? Is the U.S. dollar that fragile that they would be scared off by right, little where, Liberty Dollar? Yeah, Come where on. was the threat? Why do you think that you, you uh, drew their attention? Did they ever say or what started it, the investigation? You know, when somebody's paranoid, there doesn't take doesn't take much to set them off, and the government, in some regard, is paranoid Many. about little inroads that we make to try to support ourselves. What does is the government doing? Getting in between our interaction, right? right? It's like um, maybe they just want to feel important. Right, there guys. was no victim in your crime. Everyone who used the Liberty Dollar did so consensually. 
Right. Who, especially by now, would co have complained that their currency had quadrupled in value from the day they got it? Right. Uh, I haven't had anybody complain about it except somebody who stole it from their kid's piggy bank and <laughs> saw my face on television. Oh, maybe I can get a reward for saying something to the FBI. Somebody who already had some misdemeanor charges and had, was of dubious integrity. Mm -hmm. So I have no uh, charges of, of, of frauding anyone right. uh, on my record right okay. now. So it's, a, it's like a federal parking ticket. But still, 23 months of your life, you know. Yeah. What, what, had you ever been in a jail cell before? Never. What was that experience like? Like, how, I mean, I can only imagine, <laughs> but. Yeah. Uh, time to practice patience and just live here and now and be, uh, and try to uh, do more meditation and yoga and various things and uh, try to um, think of the day when I can use the new things I'm developing in myself to get other people excited about living for their, their rights. So living what are some of your next steps uh, post jail life, this? I mean, I know you have probably some work that you want to before officially putting this behind you, but mm -hmm. what's in the future for Kevin? I'm looking forward to having uh, events that people would experience what it's like to be moving together with others as, as a team, as a dynamic team of individuals who are seeing the process of activism as a way of changing themselves as people. They're interrelated. The more you can strengthen your core beliefs and your getting connection with your spirit, the more you're going to inspire others right. to be the change that you want to be and that they want to be in this life. So is this a traveling thing or you'll do conferences or, I mean, it sounds like you read a really interesting book, I bet, or ebook or something. Uh, I looking at uh, being part of some other venture and uh, the theme would be the inner game of activism as the idea that how we change as individuals through activism and how activism changes through us changing right. right and the stories about and that's different for everybody it takes mm -hmm. it's multicolored it's wonderful yeah I would be very interested in reading that mm -hmm. absolutely and you can participate you can be, because you're an activist, so are you, right. in yeah. various ways, and each of us adds to that color of uh, our... All of us are, yeah, everybody. Of our beautiful painting activist. we're making, right, right yeah. of uh, the way the future is ahead. What uh, would you suggest to some folks here in the Keene area that might not know, you know, precious metals or the value? What are some small tips, if they're just starting out, that you can give them from your experience? Find a business that you'd use every day. Small grocer, a gas station, and tell them, yeah, and get a list of people who are interested and right. start supporting that business. Sorry to cut you off, Kevin. No We're problem. We're going to be heading over to Michelle's side. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us tonight. Next week, Monday, is Labor Day, and the studio will be closed. But stay tuned at 7 p.m. for a new episode of Free King TV. I'm Michelle Seven saying peace be with you and yours. <laughs>